Hey class, welcome to um, the second video of the third lecture. So in this video, we're going to start with going through question three of the homework. So let's get on with it. So, whoops, that's uh, the focus is, let's see. Excuse the resolution. That's weird, there you go. Okay. So question three, um, Chelsea's dropping a basketball off a cliff. Um, the ball bounces back up 60% of the height it was dropped at. So let's actually try to draw a diagram and see what it looks like. So let's say this is the cliff. And if Chelsea drops the ball from a height, a certain height, I don't know what it's going to be. Um, let's call it H. If the height is H, then once it drops and then bounces back up, this height is now going to be 0 0.6 H. And then once it drops again, and then bounces back up, this is going to be 0 0.36h, because it's going to be 60% of the height it falls off from, which is like 0 0.6h. So 0 0.6 times 0 0.6 is going to be 0 0.36. And then this is going to continue. And if that's the case, um, how many bounces does it take before the height of the bounce goes below 10% of the original height? All right, so... In this case, um, we don't know what the initial um, height is going to be, but let's just call it h. So what we're interested in, what we're interested in, is um, this is going to be the first bounce. Let's see. Right. Okay. So this is going to be the first bounce, and after the first bounce, it goes up to zero point six h. So height. And then after the second bounce, it goes to 0 0.36H. And the third bounce is going to be 0 0.6 of that, um, whatever it's going to be. It's like 0 0.216H. So what you can see is the common ratio is actually going to be 0 0.6 because every time it bounces, it's going to go up 60% of the original height. So it's going to be an arith uh, sorry, not arithmetic progression, the geometric progression um, with a common ratio of 0 0.6. Now what we're interested in is after how many drops, uh, whatever this is going to be, after how many bounces is the height going to be less than 0 0.1? Yeah, less than 0 0.1 of the original height. All right, let's have a look. Um, this hopefully shouldn't be too hard because after third bounce, it it's already at 0 0.216. So my suggestion would be to actually just like fill out the whole table. So the fourth bounce is going to be this time 0 0.6, which is going to be, what is it going to be? It's like 0 0.1296H, I believe. And then already at the fifth bounce, you can see that it's going to go below um, 0 0.1H. So this is going to be something like 0. Um, so like 0 0.07, you know, something, something. So you already uh, times h, so you can already see that after the fifth bounce, it's going to go below zero point one h. So the number we're interested in is how many bounces does it take before the height um, goes below ten percent? It's going to be the fifth bounce. So the answer is five. Okay, I just realized that I could actually fit this in the previous video, but yeah. Um, again, about the homework, if you have any questions or if you have any comments about, um, you know, comments about the comment that I gave you. Um, which you will get hopefully by Wednesday because Wednesday is going to be your exam. Um, yeah, so if you have any questions or comments, yeah, shoot me an email. So in this video, the next thing we're going to do is to go over the review sheet that is uploaded on Canvas now. So um, as you all already know, the exam is going to be on Wednesday. Well, technically it's due on Friday, but you know, like it's going to be sometime between Wednesday and Friday, depending on when you choose to do it. So... I have the review sheet and let's actually go over it. Um, so this is going to be a solution thing. So question one. Okay. So question one is basically look at the table and write down the explicit and recursive forms. All right, for question one A, um, you can identify that this is an arithmetic progression with the common difference of four. 
So the explicit form is going to be uh, the formula a plus n minus 1 d, where a is the first number, and then d is the difference, or the common difference, so it's going to be 4. You can leave it like this if you want, but um, I would prefer that you simplify. So once you simplify this, you get 4n minus 4 plus 3, which gives you 4n minus 1. All right, for the recursive form, in one of the worksheet, one of the worksheets that I gave you, um, I actually forgot one thing about the recursive form, and I could I could actually see those um, in the previous homework, like in some of your solutions. So let me emphasize that for the recursive form, you actually need two parts. So the first part is what the initial value is, and then how the nth value relates to the previous, like n minus one value. So the first value we know is going to be three. And then a n is going to be, um, how do you get the nth number from the n minus one number? Well, you get the previous one and just add four. So this is the recursive form and you need both parts in order to get full credits. So do not forget. All right, so this was a, um, let's go to b. For b, 4, 12, 36, 108. It does not seem like an arithmetic progression, but you can see that there's a common ratio of three. So we can use the formula for, let me actually just push this up. We can use the formula, um, a n is equal to, since it's a geometric sequence, it's gonna be a times r to the power of n minus one, which equals the first number four times the common ratio to the power of n minus three, oh, sorry, n minus one. So this is the explicit form. For the recursive, um, again, you have to state the first number, which is four. And then how do you get the nth number from the n minus one number? You can see that you multiply by three. So it's gonna be three, oh, whoops, three times a n minus one. Again, you need both parts for the recursive form. All right, so that was question 1b, and then let's go to question c. C. All right, arithmetic sequence with the following values. Okay, so in this question, it um, tells you that it's an arithmetic sequence. So starting from 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 5, uh, the first value is going to be 5, and um, this is going to be 25. All right, so in order to um, write down the equations, you need to know the first value, which we do, and the common difference. So the important thing is we need to find the common difference here. So in order to find the common difference, if we go from one to five, we add four, right? And when we add four, we add 20 to a n, because five to 25 is 20. So if you increase n by four, you increase a n by 20, how much do you increase a n by if you increase n by one? Well, it's gonna be 20 divided by four, which is five. So you can see that the common difference is actually five. So once you know this, you basically know everything. So um, a n is gonna be, since it's an arithmetic progression, it's gonna be this. Um, and then just substitute the numbers in. The first number is gonna be five plus n minus one times the common difference is again five. So it's gonna be uh, five plus, sorry, five n minus five plus five, which is equal to five n. Whoops. Yeah, it's gonna be five n. All right, and then for the recursive, um, you state the first number, which is five, and then you um, relate the nth number with the n minus one number, and then you can see that from the previous number, we add five to get the next number. So this is gonna be the recursive form. All right, that was question one. Uh, let's move on to question two. Look at the explicit and recursive forms below and find the seventh term of the sequence. Okay, um, A and B, if these were to appear in the exam, then these should be gift 
points in a way that um, to find the seventh term, we're interested in a7, right? So all we need to do is just substitute n equals 7. Then we'll have the answer. So for 2a, um, a n is going to be 11 plus 3 times n minus 1. So a7 is simply going to be 11 plus 3 times 7 minus 1. And all you need to do is just calculate this. And um, this is going to be 29. All right, same goes for b. A7 is going to be, just substitute n equals, um, what is it, n equals 7, uh, which is going to be 2 times 3 to the power of 7 minus 1, which is 6. Okay, 3 to the 6 is going to be a big number. So um, in the exam, if the number turns out to be way too big, then you can just leave it like this and you're going to get full credit. Uh, whereas like numbers like these, like you can easily calculate this without a calculator. So I would like you to simplify this. But in this case, um, yeah, you can just leave it like this. Uh, if you really want to calculate this, um, I just memorized what this was. 2 times, this is going to be, uh, I'm correct, 729. So 1458. So if you actually want to explicitly write the actual number, then it's 1458. Otherwise, just leaving it as this is fine. All right, let's look at question C. Question C is um, the recursive form. So it's going to be hard for you to find the seventh term directly. But what we can do is for C, um, you can either, <coughs> sorry, you can either start from two and then keep adding five until you get to A7, or we can play smart and then um, we can actually convert this into um, an explicit form. I think that's gonna be the best way to do this. So we, from the, from the recursive form, we can actually see that this is gonna be an arithmetic progression with the first number being two, and the common difference being 5. So a n is going to be um, using the formula n minus 1 d. So that's going to be 2 plus n minus 1 times 5, which is 5 n minus 5 plus 2, which is 5 n um, minus 3. Once you know this, then it's going to be exactly the same as a. You just substitute n equals 7, and then you can see that it's actually going to be 32. All right, let's um, wrap this video up with question D. Question D is going to be similar. It's just that it, this is um, a geometric sequence. So for the geometric sequence, the formula that we're going to use is A times R to the power of N minus 1. So A7 is simply, oh, whoops. Well, we actually need to find what this is. Um, and this is going to be 1 times the ratio is 2 to the power of N minus 1, which means a7 is simply going to be 2 to the power of 7 minus 1, which is 6, which this is not going to be hard to calculate, 64. All right, so that wraps up um, this video, and I will see you again with the third video, the third lecture, which is going to be uploaded at the same time.